Welcome to Next Post on Next Media Hub on YouTube. As usual, my name is Mohamed Kamo, and I'm here with my guest. Um, his name is Patrick Apregu. You can actually call him Mana Prek of Sika FM. He's an astute um, analyst when it comes to the fold of sports, and we are here to give you an in-depth analysis of the Afcon or the oncoming or the ongoing Afcon that is um, coming up in the Cameroon or coming up in Cameroon, as well as some of the um, the um, transfer window. We just shut um, in the, that is a winter transfer. We just shut in um, some few days ago or thirty first of last month, and we are here to see. Um, the losers and the gainers of this transfer window and um Mala break. Welcome yes, to the show. Yeah, thank you. Yes, so um in fact I'm so happy and I think our audience, our viewers are also so glad um to see you on this program. And actually um we know the caliber of person you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been in this um institution for a very long time and um we are here to see um talk about uh, the AFCON, the ongoing AFCON as well as um, the transfer window, we just shut the window, winter transfer window. So though some of the clubs were not so busy, but we have some few clubs, big clubs, who are very, very busy in the winter transfer window. And um, in short, uh, we have some four big clubs who were very, very busy in the transfer window. And we are coming to see um, the signings that they've done and how these signings are going to help um, these um, clubs to um, progress in the um, ongoing um, league fixtures going on. Then let's take a look at um, the first one. The Afcon. All right. Um, let, let me also thank you for the privilege. I think uh, uh, it's not easy for someone to just call you to come and uh, be on this show. Sure. And once I invited me, then I think uh, it's a privilege that I have to make it. Um, going straight to your question, uh, the Afcon. Uh, I think it has been an interesting Afcon. Started with 24 uh, countries, including our own Ghana. Unfortunately, we are part of those who. We have put it out through the group stage. And now we have um, three teams vying for the final. We have one, one already, which is Senegal. They booked their ticket last night uh, when they played against um, Burkina Faso. Yes. And tonight we are going to witness um, the match, the, I mean, the big game, this match, uh, game of uh, final. Sure. Not just, yeah, not just final. a semi final match. Because um, last two editions, that was 2017. These two teams were in the final. I mean, um, Cameroon and then uh, Egypt. Finally, for Cameroon, they were the virtual winners after beating Egypt by two goals to one. Okay. And now they are meeting the semi final of this class. And between them, they have 12 African titles. Wow. It's Egypt having seven and then five going for Cameroon. So it tells you that um, the, the two teams here are at the semi finals. They are, they are not there for a fluke. By, uh, by uh, their performance that they are there, and um, it's going to be a very good game. Which of them, uh, whoever wins this game tonight, is going to meet Senegal. And I must tell you that um, they will have a lot of work to do. If you look at all the teams, I think uh, Senegal, one might not know, but they have, when it comes to quality players, players that plays in big teams, sure. you can count many of them in the Senegalese team. I don't know if you. Uh, yes, you like um, the names of. Uh, yeah, like the, the, the they are going to play. They are going to play. Yeah. Is that the goalkeeper? Is the goalkeeper? He's a Champions League winner. He he keeps the post for Charles, right? Yes, yeah, sure. You go to their right back, and you see uh, somebody like Bonasa. Bonasa, yeah. Bonasa is playing for Bayern, Bayern Munich. Yes. Big team. Yes, sure. Yesterday, the the the, the, the person who scored their first goal, uh, Diallo Abu Diallo. Abu Diallo. Yes. PSG. And he's not alone there. Uh, Sadio Mane playing for Liverpool. No, I, I want you to talk about it. another PSG player there. Idris Aganagi. Yeah, Idris Aganagi. Yes, he's also there. Sure. Playing for the Sigalis team. Then you have Sadio Mane playing yeah. for. Kyle Kulubali is Napoli defender, exactly. top defender, sure. playing for um, Senegal. So you realize that Senegal, they have the men. Sure. But they are narrated sometimes because. They are here to win it. Uh, yeah, yes, that is why they are underrated. But I think uh, this year will be their year. It should be their year. But like that's why I'm saying that the two teams that will be playing tonight, Cameroon and then Egypt, mm -hmm. which of uh, any one of them who wins today, tonight's game will face some task mm -hmm. that uh, they have to play about themselves to be able to beat uh, Senegal. But I will be happy if Senegal, because they've done enough. And one thing I like about the Senegal team is that they've been able to keep faith in their head coach. Who is a local coach? I lose it. He was there with the team. He qualified them for the 2017 edition. 
they win the quarterfinal stage. Then 2019, he took them to the final. They played against Algeria and they lost to Algeria. Now, he has going to take the team to the final. Meaning, he has been with the team for not less than six years. Sure. So, consistency is paying for um, Senegal. Okay. That is why I see them as favorites. Okay. Even though they didn't start the tournament well, the first game they struggled to beat Zimbabwe. Right. By a long way, that even goal came at the tail end of the game. Yeah. During the um, time added. Then the second game, they drew. Their third group game, they drew. So they managed five points from the group stage. From there, they've been fantastic. They are now in your finals. So um, the, the AFCON has witnessed a lot of good players and then good performances from other countries. We've seen a lot of teams, even though they are out now. Even the Comoros that defeated Ghana, um, talk of even Equatorial Guinea. Yes. Talk of other teams. I mean, they, they, they have a lot of um, strategy that they came with in the tournament. Next edition, if you see or you meet set teams there, you see different ball game yeah, all together. Yeah, sure. That is it. So, um, we are going to witness a very good game. Before you continue, um, I mean, um, what's the they've been very consistent. As we are talking about 2019, they were beaten by um, Algeria. Yeah. Yes. So, Senegal, I think every Afghan. People usually tip them as maybe because they have quality players, mm. they are going to do over them. But they disappoint. They disappoint. Mm. So what is it that um, this time round um, you think they are going to win the tournament this time? No, um, not that I think, but it's my wish. I want them to win. Okay. I want them to win because they, they, they have a team, and that the consistency that they they even have in the coach of uh, Alim Sisi. Okay. That is why I believe that what they've done. They have to at least get the word for, yeah, word for that. And they believe that they have for their own. Okay, sure, sure. You see, they believe that they have for their own. So okay. must pay off for them. Okay, so let's take a look at um, tonight's game coming up. We have Egypt coming up against um, uh, the host nation. Come on. Yes, I've already said that um, the game is between the two most successful countries. Yes. Yes. Egypt, the first two have come that they won. I don't know if you know the history about AFCON. The AFCON started in 1957. Uh, it was supposed to be played by, it was like an invitational tournament. Okay. It was to be played among four teams Sudan, Ethiopia, Egypt, and South Africa. They did the balloting. Then Sudan were to play Egypt, and then South Africa to play Ethiopia. The South Africa decided that no. They will not fold any black player. South Africa, that was their position. Wow. And Calf said, no, this is tournament for Africans. Africans. And everybody knows that we have blacks in Africans, or Africans are mostly black. Yes. So why do you want to leave them out? They still insisted. And they said, okay, if that is the case, they will not play. We will not participate. Wow. And indeed, South Africa did not participate. They withdrew because they had wanted to do what they wanted. Others are saying no. So they say no. So they left the tournament. So it was left with only three teams. At that time, the balloting has already been done. Egypt were to play Sudan and then Ethiopia and South Africa. So it means that Ethiopia will automatically be on standby. Yes. Then Egypt will play against Sudan. And they beat Sudan. Okay. When Egypt beat Sudan, they have to play um, Ethiopia. Right. They defeat Ethiopia and they won the title. Four a three team tournament. Then the team the uh, the next edition, four teams. Egypt won the game. Before Ethiopia won the next one, then Ghana came in to win the 1963 and 65 uh, one before 68 to the to win. So Egypt won their first two. I'm only making analysis as to why Egypt has won many, so many yeah, yes. Outcomes. But to me, on paper, they've won just like Cameroon has won. Five five. Okay. Because with these two, I don't recognize the first two. The first two, yeah. That is why I gave that history. All right. I gave that history. But whatever it is, the, on record they have seven, they have seven. titles. So um, let's talk about the tournament itself. Their strength. Egypt lost their first game. I think to Nigeria also. Yes. Yes, they lost their first game. Cameroon, they are here to lose a match. Sure. 
they are only where performance was, I think, a wrong, wrong game in the group stage. They had seven points to qualify for the group stage. Um, they have two players with 11 goals to their credits. Okay, that is Vincent Abubakar. Vincent Abubakar is having six goals. And then uh, it can be. It can be. It can be also having five goals. Vincent Abubakar is also having another four assists, one assist to his credits. So they may be. But if you are playing with a side with two prolific strikers, it's, it puts some fear in you. Sure. And it puts some fear in you. And because any time that uh, the ball gets to them, you don't know which of them. That's the problem that they are going to cause for the Egyptians. But hey, nobody should write the Egyptians off. Okay. Even the magic of Mohamed Salah alone sure. can change things to the advantage. Mohamed Elin is there. He has not been that up there playing for us now. But at this level, if you look at his performance, it's, av it's average, yeah. but very compact in the game. Yes. Very compact in the game. They might not have big names. I mean, the Egyptians. But even Salah alone can cause havoc to any defender in this world. Sure. So playing against Egypt, you, you can't say, oh, because uh, uh, they, are, they don't have uh, big names playing the only Salah. No. I've heard um, Mr. Abaka saying something about Salah, that Salah is no blah, 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 blah. Like you, see, you see Salah tonight. <laughs> but definitely, I, I will agree with those who think that um, Cameroon starts as favorite in this game. I will be on that side. But because I will not write Egypt off. Is it because they are a constellation? No, no, no. It's because of the two striker that you score Levy goes between them. And the disadvantage um, for um, Egypt, Cameroon, Egypt. Egypt is that uh, their captain, Hegazi, mm -hmm. will not be featuring this match. You see, I, 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 was not, I, I was not mentioning uh, big names, sure. but I, I only mentioned Mohamed Salah. Yes. He alone can do so many of to the defenders of uh, Cameroon. Cameroon will have their supporters behind them, which is an uh, advantage. But the big stage, these Egyptian players, they, they are not afraid of to play this. Yes, they will play their normal game. And if Cameroon failed to capitalize on some time that they will get, they will regret. All right. So who wins tonight? I will go for Cameroon. So we have um, Senegal Cameroon finals. That is what I'm looking out to. And to you, you feel Senegal will lead the trophy? That is what I'm looking All right. Thank you very much. Um, Hannah Craig. Our viewers, this program is brought to you by Nix IT Limited and um, R2A2 Global Import Limited. Um, you'll see your information on the screen showing. Then um, let's take a look at um, the transfer window, the winter transfer window, which just shut. Yes. Yes, we have um, Barcelona signing some four players. That is Danny Alves, Ferran Torres. We have Aubameyang and then um, Adama Traore. Then Juventus, they, they signed Dusan Vlahovic. Then we have Denis Zakaria. Then um, these are the two big players that mm. Juventus signed. Then we have um, Tottenham, who also signed Bentaco and then Kulusevski. Then Everton also signed Deli Ali and then Donny van der Beek. Now let's take a look at how these signings or these um, teams, the players they've signed. Let's take a look at how they are going to impact on the performance of these teams coming up in the There, there, there is um, one humanitarian signing that um, we didn't mention. And that signing is um, Christian Eriksen. Christian Eriksen, yes, yes. Christian yes, Christian moving Brentford. to Brentford. Yes. I think it's a humanitarian signing. What am I saying to you? He's a player um, who got injured uh, during the uh, Euros. Yeah. And then uh, he couldn't even continue. And we all know how, what happened in their game. Yes. Yes, the game was stopped and then later... Personally, I wasn't happy that the game was even played on um, that same night, but you will find another association. They think about the money. So the sad guy should go on. So be it. Then this player went back to his club and they said the Italian league, their rules doesn't permit someone to play with heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's very sad. Yeah, very sad. So now, um, Thomas Frank decided that no, he's my countryman. Let me bring him to Brentford. Brentford officials said, no, we have to sign him. I mean, God in even reward them for that. 
Sure. So that is the humanitarian assignment that I'm talking about. All right. Aside that, <laughs> the thing that you mentioned, you see, when transfer transfer window opens, the mid one, that the first transfer window, anytime it opens, you will see the clubs who are struggling. Yeah. Chasing players. Chasing players, yes. And these teams it's very obvious. Basa is struggling. Yeah, it's very obvious. Juve is struggling. Tottenham is struggling. Okay. Everton is struggling. Yes. So okay. it's normal. You see, you don't you don't even write um uh, um, um Diaz, Liverpool. Yeah, Luis Diaz. Luis Diaz. To Liverpool, yes. To Liverpool. You don't write because you think Liverpool is okay. Liverpool is okay. They yes. only made a signing just for single reason. You sign, but a very important signing that they've done. It will help them a lot. But with them now, will he really start for Liverpool if you have Sadio Mane and Salah? No, at least team. if you have set a player in your team as a backup player, it's good. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a good addition. All right. Let's do you very needed players even more than <laughs> Basa. <laughs> I'm even surprised they didn't sign many players. Uh, but Blavich uh, and then Denis Zakaria. Not bad. I think they can complement um, their efforts in the team team for them. I I I am happy. Avaro Morata stayed. Yes. He didn't move. Um, he nearly joined Barcelona, yes. and, uh, but now he's still there. So it's good for Juve. Tottenham, Betacar, and they've also allowed some players to leave. Delia Lee, some few players to. I think I think uh, Mobile too. What was the name of that player? As a Tonga in Dombele. In Dombele. Yes. He was a Olympic player. Yes, he was a lot. So some good outcome. Um, they've changed managers this season. Yes. And they are hoping for the best. So getting one or two signings won't be bad. So we have to look at how how they will fare. Yeah. Tottenham because they were part, they were one of the favorites to be in the top four. Top four but yes. now they are struggling. They're struggling. But they still have another chance to themselves ever since ever since Ancelotti left them they've not been yeah, that ever that mm -hmm. yes I think that um, Dele Ali too is having his own problems you see when Moreno was there people were saying that uh, Moreno doesn't like him that is why he was not using him yes. now different manager camps is not there Antonio Conte uh, different uh, Antonio Conte also come yes, and they say no. the same story. Then you've been transferred. Yes. So he tells you that the player himself has a problem. Yes. Don't even the big. You see, um, I think he was moving to Crystal Palace. Yes. Yes, he was supposed to join Vera at Crystal Palace. But um, Lampard moved in quickly and yes. said, no, I think I'm needing. Yeah, join. So now he's going to have a playing time. He should prove why he was peeved that he was not being used yes, by various yeah. managers at Manchester United. Yes, exactly. He should go and prove. And I believe that he can prove himself there. Okay. Because we knew what was made up when he was with Ajax yes, yes. before he joined United. Unfortunately, maybe uh, for some reasons he couldn't break through the um, lineup of United. Now let's come to uh, the old, 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 old boys. Barca. Barcelona. Anyway, those who know me know that I'm a Madrid fan. Okay. But I will try as much as possible not to be Okay. in this analysis. Alright. Danny Alves. <coughs> he has started already, so you've seen what he can do you for can do, yes. And he was there with them before he left and then came back. Came back yes. So his experience is can be questioned. They said the ambition or the main priority is to win the La Liga. Okay. And for that for that reason, they they didn't even include him in the um, Europa, Europa squad. squad. Yes. Rather, they added the new three guys. Yes. Ferran Torres is a Spanish. Yes. And uh, he has played in the Spanish league before. Yeah, for Valencia. Yes, Valencia. Um, Adam Atrari.
Two was Bassa player. Yes. He started with Bassa Team B, and later was promoted to the Team A, but for a short period before he left for outside yeah, Spain. Yeah, yes. And now uh, he was with uh, Ram Team on the slides. Yes. We know his caliber. Just that when the, this season started, the runs was there, but his productive yeah, action productive wasn't there. Very low, yes. So who knows? Maybe the materials that were there were not helping him. At Barcelona, they've now gotten some young players. Yes. Who can support the coach? They even they were even playing well before the break. The, the young, even though they've been out of Copa the Rey, and then by because that they've improved at the point they were lying sixteenth on the La Liga table. Yes. You see, but now you can see them. Maybe at the seventh position also, they are coming in between them, and then the fourth team of Alega is not that wide. It's so close. having such place and Aubameyang inclusive, yeah, okay. thirty-two year old Aubameyang. Aubameyang is he is playing in the La Liga for, for the first time because he started in football um, with France yes. before he moved to Germany. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Milan, Dortmund, then England. Now you're going to taste La Liga. I can't question his qualities. qualities, but I can question his attitude. You see, when um, Osman Dembele was being signed by Barca from Nottingham, yes. the attitude that he put up before Barca signing is the same attitude that he used. The same as? Yes. It's true. That is the problem. So Obama, the Gabonema that we used to call him. You see, when they go, went to the Af Afcon, because of indiscipline, he was sent back. Okay. He was sacked from the competition. Wow. And he and one other player at their team leader, they went out for ladies and they brought ladies to the hotel. They were sacked. They were sacked. So it's an act of indiscipline. So if you are a player and you want to succeed, I mean, you see that the problem with Africans and uh, most African players. Let me, let me let me put it that way okay. because I have seen a point we are playing at the top level, oh, winning. I won't adore a best player. Yes. And there wasn't any problem with him. You've seen yeah, our own Abedi Pele yes. playing at the high, high level, yes. including Marcel, and we didn't get any problem. So Bamiyang is a very good player, but. Will he change his lifestyle to suit Barcelona? Okay, the information is that um, he has signed a contract of discipline mm. with Barcelona. So every time he shows any kind of mm. discipline in the team, his contract will be terminated. That is the so, contract he signed so, with Barcelona. So, so what I call? I throw that. Yeah, what call that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir, I'm back. I saw them. You can't say for better for us. Yeah, for better for us. Yeah, what should we believe? <laughs> what happens? And we are so them. Yes, yes, yes. So we can sign whatever, whatever. There's punishment attached to yes. what he has signed. Yes. He <laughs> can decide to beat and then be punished. Yeah, yeah, sure. You see? Yeah. So I'm saying that he himself must check himself and change his attitude. Right. It will help him. Because he's a fine player. If you check his goal goal scoring from not even at Arsenal, yeah, it's not that bad. Not bad at all. I think he scored about sixty-eight goals or so yes. in some game that he played for Arsenal also. So, so I think he's not a bad player, but his but for his attitude would have been fantastic. Like I said, at the point he was even not part of um, Arsenal first level. He was not playing because his form dipped. Yes. But yes. now he is the captain of Arsenal. Because of discipline, and his form is gradually picking up. By you, you you sought permission to go to France to meet your parents or whatever that your mother or your father was saying. Yeah, the mother was not there. You went. You were given on days or ten that go early and come same day, the same night return. It's like somebody asking you, you are going to Accra. Okay, go early in the morning. 
you are going by A. Whatever you can do, you can do, and then maybe four or five, you join another return flight, then you yes. come back. If you don't come, it means that it's deliberate. Yes, yes. Not the problem. And apart from that, his training schedule, he decides to use his own time, the time that he wish, to report. So the act of discipline on the part of Obama is very bad. So you have to change. If he changes, I believe that it will help him and it help Barcelona itself. Ferran Torres I play, I think, one game or two for Barcelona. Yes. We, knew, we, we, we knew him at um, Man City. City. And uh, what he can uh, bring on board for Barca. So the assignments to is it bad? Right. I hope I've been fair. Yeah, you've been fair. Okay. Yeah, you've been fair. Thank you very much for having me. Viewers, um, actually, you really enjoyed um, this program. Um, it's an astute um, analyst when it comes to um, the football, football or soccer in general. And um, this program is brought to you by Nix IT Limited and um, R2A2 Global Import Limited. Um, just check on the screen. Um, you see the services of Nix IT and R2A2 Global Import Limited. Um, thank you very much for making time with us. See you next time. Bye.